The first is transparency, right? If you think about things like the private placement markets, bond issuance, equities, etc., for the normal person, the transparency of where those assets sit uh, and how they can be found is something that's fundamentally different in blockchain. Uh, when you think about assets on the blockchain, where there are Bitcoin assets, uh, Ethereum assets, um, outside of mostly permission blockchains, where you can kind of keep that somewhat uh, hidden, there's transparency in terms of how the assets are moving, what wallets are holding different types of assets, uh, etc. There's not you know, transparency in terms of the identity behind those wallets, but there is transparency in terms of where those assets exist, right? And that's a fundamentally different mode of, of kind of operating. I think the second is the settlement and clearing models between uh, traditional finance and, and blockchain and digital assets. Uh, if you look at traditional finance, outside of OTC kind of assets, for most of your large products, these are centrally cleared assets. They might sit at DTCC within Euroclear, CLS from an FX perspective, but they sit at large financial institutions where they're cleared between you know, major counterparties. If you think about what we're seeing in the digital space, we're seeing peer-to-peer -peer settlement and clearing. We're seeing operating models that are 24-7, 365, that in essence operate and run at all times of the day, at all hours of the night, and the market is moving accordingly. And so, you know, when you think about the access to really trading, when you think about the access to clearing and settlement, that model, it, if, even if you think about things like DeFi and what that's even doing on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, those models are fundamentally different from, you know, your traditional assets and your traditional spaces. And then I think the last thing that I, I like to focus on is the actual control of the asset. If you think about how you access dollars today, unless you pull out those dollars in cash and hold it under your bed sheet, right? In general, banks are rehypothecating assets. The dollar that you see in your account is not really a dollar that is sitting there in your control. It's an IOU of the bank that basically they will give you or issue you that dollar uh, at a certain point in time when you need it. The same happens with equities. You don't really control the paper, uh, the equity paper that you're trading at Robinhood, right? Uh, Robinhood, as the broker, owns that equity piece of paper, and they have control at, in terms of how they leverage that or lend it out. Uh, and you have no, you know, upside in in those activities. When you think about what you have in the digital asset space, you have the ability with, you know technology like Fireblocks, ledger devices, et cetera, to control your assets, to actually hold those assets physically and be the owner of that asset, and then to actually deploy those assets in things like smart contracts or to lending providers and earn yield directly on the assets that you hold. And so that is, a, I think, a critically different model uh, than a lot of the centralized financial institutional models that we see today. And I think that's what makes you know, digital finance uh, and how it's being kind of created and transformed today, very different from what we've seen in legacy financial institutions.